You're listening to the Storied Coaching Podcast with Aaron J. Jacobs, episode number 99. This week, I'm encouraging you to not read the comment section. I'll tell you all about it. Forward. What if you could rewrite your current story? How would you spend your time? What would your career or business look like? What kind of life would you design? Welcome to Storied Coaching the podcast for high-performing leaders that provides you with tools and insights for building a thriving business that fuels an amazing life on your terms. I'm Aaron J. Jacobs, and as a master coach and the CEO of OMH Creative and Storied Coaching, I've had the privilege and opportunity to learn what it takes to rewrite your story. It's never too late for a rewrite. Welcome to the podcast this week, my friends, my fellow heroes writing your own hero stories. I've got one for you this week that's gonna very much help you when you're writing your own hero story. And that is because when you're writing your own hero story, you really shouldn't be reading the comments because it's not helpful. It's not something that's gonna help you. In fact, the reason that I thought of this week is because this has come up in the past as well, but right now that there is a another resurgence because probably because it's voting season and that's when a lot of the trolls like to come out. Let's be honest, whatever side of the fence you're on politically, there's going to be people that have strong opinions one way or the other. So those comment sections tend to get a bit toxic. And I think I'm being a little understated there. But there has been an effort ongoing for years in most journalistic publications. We're talking big ones like the big newspapers and big publications online that you've heard about. The movement to ban the comment section from journalistic publications. Now, we've all been in the comment section, right? <laughs> Whether it's an article that we published or whether something that you did or whether it's that you were reading an article about cooking a souffle and you go, you feel really great about the article. It's a great article. You learned how to cook the new souffle and you want to go try it. And, and you notice at the bottom uh, before you click away that there's a comment section. And the first comment that you read is, oh, my gosh, you're an idiot. This is the worst way to cook a souffle I've ever seen. You don't know what you're talking about. And then you call into question everything you just read, even though you were feeling good about it, you were motivated to go try out and do the souffle, all the things, you're all of a sudden calling into question everything you just read and maybe not in the best way because you don't know who that person was, you don't know who they are, you don't know if it's a bot at this point, that's something we're dealing with as well. And so paying attention to the comment section can a lot of times knock us off track of something maybe that we've already accomplished that we're feeling really good about. And all of a sudden we decide to focus on one person's opinion about something. And it's not a big group as well. NPR actually, and did a, a huge study on this with their organization and then outside organizations as well several years ago. And what they found was in the comment section, just 0.06% of all the visitors to their publication, in this case, NPR.org, in a single month. So 0.06% of all the visitors in a single month actually submitted a comment at all. So we're already talking about not a big demographic slice and definitely not equal between pro, con, neutral. Because more than half of all the comments submitted came from just a tiny group of shockingly, as they put it, shockingly prolific contributors who it is estimated disproportionately tended to be Middle-aged white men. <laughs> now, I happen to be in this demographic, but I think we all know that sometimes my demographic can be a little louder than others, okay? And so it's a very specific 0.06% of all of the people that read that article. And then it's a very small segment of people's opinions in a very specific demographic. So I want to call that into question, first of all. Now, if that wasn't enough to pare it down and to have you take with a huge grain of salt the comment section, whether it's something that you're doing in your life or something that you've asked people for their opinions in a, what you consider a small circle, or maybe it's even your own brain and it's commenting on things that you've done and having you maybe all of a sudden look at the negative side and playing devil's advocate or something like that that it's a very small percentage that maybe you should be paying attention to and taking it with a really big, like I said, grain of salt. Because a series of subsequent analyses after this found that when readers were exposed to uncivil, 
negative comments at the end of articles, that they are less trustful of the main content, even though it's full of facts. And they dubbed this actually the nasty effect because the people that tended to make the time to post a comment weren't there to help support or to cheer on the person that had accomplished something. They were there to tear them down. So the people that make time to write these comments were actually the people that were going to be more negative to start with. So 0.06%, very small percentage. In this example, a very narrow age, population, ethnicity. And then of those people, mainly just negative comments. So whenever we hear don't read the comment section or we see a star talk about the fact that like they never read the comments, this might be the reason why. And the reason they wanted to, to remove the comment section from most large journalistic publications online or in print was because it wasn't adding to a robust actual discussion or commentary where people were in good spirit arguing both sides of something that someone then could come out with their own opinion. It mostly devolved into trolling and name calling and things like that. Either you agree with me or you don't. There was no middle ground. And so if we're putting this in the context of what I'm helping you talk about, and we're talking about your own story, and that you might be going out into the world to write a new story for yourself, and it's scary, and you've gone through all the hero journey stages that I've talked about in the early episodes, the first 11 or 12 episodes I did of this podcast that you can go back and look at as far as the, the typical hero's journey and the things you can expect when you are reinventing yourself, reinventing your story, whether that's reinventing the story of your body and how you move or reinventing how you move through the world, reinventing, starting a new business, getting into a new relationship with a partner, all the different ways that we can rewrite and start on a new adventure, a new hero's journey, a new story for ourselves that we need to be very careful about the people that we invite to have commentary on our story, especially when we're just forming it. Now, I talk about this specifically in an episode. I believe it's episode number, let's see, 14, the Hero's Journey series. Yes. So it's episode 14 of the Hero's Journey series that I initially started this podcast with, and it's called The Return. So if you want to check that out, I go really deep into that here. It's a very specific part. It's towards the end when someone's reinventing themselves that when they're walking through the world now, people in their life, especially, notice that they're different. And I use it as an example of that when I was deciding to not drink anymore. That the story of myself that I had created in for years up to that was I was the cocktails guy. If you wanted a great margarita, a fantastic Manhattan, an amazing dirty martini, like I took great pride in the fact that I had this amazing bar set up and all of the different accoutrements and it was backlit and it was so fun. And I used to bartend when I was in college and in my mid 20s at some fancy places up in Seattle, locally the where I lived and internationally when I lived over in, in England as well. And I, I had that as part of my story. It was part of the story of Aaron and what people could expect. And I liked that about myself. What had happened over time was that I was getting into over drinking and that then it became something that I didn't want to have in my life anymore. But I had the story of myself of being this great host and being this person that created all these cocktails. And so it was jarring for people at first in my life, close friends, acquaintances that were used to coming over and us, my wife and I entertaining. It was jarring for me not to be that guy anymore. And it's not their fault. I specifically decided to change something in my life and to rewrite my story. And so it is a little bit disjointing for people at first. There's a little bit of cognitive dissonance, as we call it in the coaching industry, where they thought that the pattern was one way. And now there, there's a new pattern that's being introduced and it doesn't lock in right away. But the thing is, there's no reason to be mad about that. That's OK. Everything's going to plan here. People are going to need some time to adjust to the new version of you. So the comment section, when you're presenting the new version of you, and it's soft and it's tender a lot of times, people might have opinions. You might just get that the vibe's a little bit different. You might pick up on something subtle like that. Or it could be where people come out and say stuff to you that they don't like the way you've changed. 
the way you've changed dressing, the way you've changed that you present yourself, the fact that you've decided to start a business and like, isn't that kind of risky? Who do you think you are? Some of these things are really well-intentioned from people. Some of them stem from jealousy, let's be honest, because they're not brave enough to take the steps that you have, you've possibly taken. And some of it is because of the fact that they feel that if you are making a change in your life and they haven't made that same change themselves, for instance, if it's exercise or reducing your drinking or something like that, that you are judging them because you're a new person and you don't do that anymore or you do it differently. So it has so much more to do with the fact that they are maybe feeling ways about, does this put a magnifying glass on me, a spotlight on me? Do you think that how I walk through the world is wrong now? And if you're anything like me and most of the people that I coach and that are writing new stories for themselves, the answer is, oh my gosh, we don't care. We're doing this for us. We love you just the way that you are. You can decide to change or not change, but we're not judging you. We're just finding a new way to walk through life with a new version of our story that makes us happier. It's not a commentary on you at all. But people are human and they might not even realize that they're doing that. And that's the reason that they have comments for you, <laughs> that they're writing things either out loud or in their brain in the comment section of the new story of your life that you may pick up on in some way. Could be your parents, could be your spouse, could be your boyfriend or your girlfriend, close friends in your circle, acquaintances, professional acquaintances as well, and professional people that you work with on a daily basis. Some of them might have comments. It doesn't mean that you have to pay attention to the comment section or weight it with any sort of weight. In fact, I would be surprised if you're making large changes and evolving in your life, if people don't have some sort of opinion about it. It doesn't mean that you have to pay any fucking attention to it. In fact, it's good practice for you not to. Do not read the comment section. Now, another thing that I want to talk about here is the comment section in your own brain. Other people are one thing, and that can be uncomfortable when you're writing a new story for yourself. If you've decided to go ahead and get on testosterone therapy or something like that, you might be afraid that people think that you're on steroids now or that you're cheating, or something like that. These are all things that I've heard. That might be in your own brain, or people might think that, but let them think that's okay. It doesn't have to affect you unless you let it. But letting it stop you from evolving into a new version of yourself, that's when it becomes a problem. When you start second-guessing your own forward momentum and the things that you want to achieve in your life, that's when it becomes drag that's completely unnecessary and you need to consider possibly not asking for those people's comments or reducing your contact with them for at least a certain amount of time until you can more concretely feel good about the version of yourself that you've walked into and that you've invented for yourself. This is what I've found. Because like I said before, it's unrepresentative of the whole as more people with negative bias are prone to take the time to comment. That's just the way it works. This is why Facebook and Twitter can become so quickly toxic because it's about who can make the better, more sharper comment. And a lot of times that's negative and it has nothing to do with the story or with the person or with your, what you're trying to accomplish. Do not allow others to dictate your forward momentum is what this boils down to. Now, if you want to deep dive more on this specifically, I'd say go ahead and listen to some of the highlights from that whole series. But episode number 14, if you want to listen to a little bit more about this and how it fits into the hero's journey and why it's something to be expected, you should expect people, they're going to comment, whether silently with through the vibe or whether it's through people actually telling you what their opinion is in the comment section of your new thing that you are making for yourself. Expect it. It's part of the journey. It's part of testing you to see if you are really becoming the person you want to be and making sure that you're serious. It's actually part of your evolution. It's something you have to move through, even though it's uncomfortable. So that's episode 14 of the Hero's Journey series. That's number uh, 11 of 11. OK, so check that out. It's called The Return. Other than that, my friends. I don't want to belabor the point. 
I just want you really to embrace the fact that listening to the comment section, whether it's something that you have tangibly created and put out there onto the internet or in print or that book you want to write or whatever it is, or whether it's your own brain, the editor in your own brain that likes to talk. I like to call it the parrot. Mine's name is Frank, and he's very mean sometimes. He sits on my shoulder and tells me all the reasons why something's not going to work or why I failed in the past or how this might be silly or what people might think. I don't need to listen to Frank. I don't need to listen to his comments. I can shove a cracker in his mouth and tell him that I'm in charge right now. This is who we're becoming. This is what we're doing. And you'll be amazed at how quickly once that you shove that cracker in Frank's mouth, in my case, he gets quiet. But don't go looking for the comments. Be very particular about who you ask, their opinion of, of the things that you are trying to do in your life and the things that you are trying to accomplish and the story you're trying to write. All right, my friends, that's it for now. Have a fantastic week. Don't read the comment section. Just keep moving forward with the story that you want to create. People will come around. Talk to you soon. If you are a man interested in learning more about testosterone optimization and other cutting edge wellness therapies, coupled with high performance coaching, you have to check out olympusmen.com. There you will find out more about how to work with us, as well as a free guide that will answer everything you always wanted to know about testosterone therapy and if it might be right for you. Head to olympusmen.com right now to learn more. Thanks for listening to Storied Coaching with Aaron J. Jacobs. If you want more information or resources from the podcast, visit us at storiedcoaching.com.